I'm Sarah Borkson-Keeter with REIT.com and welcome to Quick Study, a monthly review of REIT market developments with Brad Case, NAY REIT's Senior Vice President for Research and Industry Information. Welcome, Brad. It's a pleasure. Last time we spoke about how October was by and large a good month for REITs. How would you describe market performance in November? Uh, November has been a very difficult uh, month for REIT investors. In fact, they really gave away, gave back all of the gains that they made during October. Uh, REITs lost just more than 4%. Um, during the month of November, whereas the broad market was up just a little bit more than 3%. If you look at what's happened since the beginning of the year, in the first few months of the year, REITs uh, were performing a little bit better than the broad market. Uh, REITs were up 14.9% on the year through April, whereas the broad market was up only 12.7%. Since then, REITs have given away most of, most of those gains in the early part of the year, and REITs are now up only 2.35% for the year as a whole. They've come down 11% since, uh, uh, you know, since, the, since May 21st, which was the high point this year. Meanwhile, the broad market has continued to just roar. And, uh, and so, so, there, that, that's, uh, so the REIT market and the broad stock market have moved very differently. That's not a surprise. If you look at, at, at historical data, um, generally speaking, the REIT market and the broad stock market don't move very closely together. Generally, REITs outperform the broad stock market by a little bit. If, in fact, if you look at any period of five years or longer, uh, REITs have outperformed the broad stock market. But in the last five years, the real estate market and the REIT market had their recovery earlier than the broad stock market. So what's happening now is that the broad stock market has been catching up with the recovery the re that the REITs made over the last several years. How would you explain um, market behavior that we saw in November? Well, it's very difficult for me to explain how the market has been reacting over the last several months. Um, and, and one way to look at that is to look at um, how different sectors of the REIT market performed during the month of November. If you look at the two sectors that were most severely hit during November, they're healthcare and self-storage. But over the past year as a whole, those have been respectively one of the weakest performing sectors and one of the strongest performing sectors. So it's not as though the market is treating sectors um, in the month of November as they've treated them for the rest of the year. It's equally with the, with the best performing sectors. The best performing sectors in the market were regional malls and lodging and resorts. Regional malls have been among the, the weakest sectors during the, during the year, um, whereas lodging and resorts has been the strongest sector. So it's very difficult for me to come up, come up with a story that makes sense of how the market has treated, uh, treated the, uh, the different parts of the real estate market this year. Earlier this year, there was talk about REITs being overvalued. Would you say that there's still a case to be made for that? Oh, I, I think it's very, very difficult to make any sort of case that REITs are overvalued now. Uh, regardless of whether you value REITs um, by looking at the values of their properties or whether you're valuing them according to their cash flows, their funds from operations and other measures of earnings. Um, what we've seen is, is as I said, you know, a loss of 14% since in the REIT market since May 21st. Um, REITs now, uh, it, it's very difficult to say that they're overvalued um, uh, uh, either relative to the values of their underlying properties or relative to their cash flows. And when we look at the future, what we've seen is, uh, is a beginning of, of an increase in interest rates. That's coming about because of signs of strength in the economy um, or, and th that I expect to continue over the last several years. Not, not very, very strong economic growth, but steady economic growth over the next several years. Um, if, that, if that is what happens, then what we will tend to see is greater rent growth, and greater occupancy levels in essentially all parts of the real estate market. And that will increase the values of the properties that REITs own, and it will also increase uh, their cash flows. And so in either of those cases, what I would expect to see strong support for continued REIT stock price, price growth um, over the next few years. Thank you, Brad. It's a pleasure. And for more news and analysis on all things REIT, please visit REIT.com. Mm -hmm.